Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So what you are looking at here is the edge of the uh, coherent plasma, the uh, wetted together ball lightnings as I am referring these two in the Vega Valley and the channel is about one millimeter. You can see the 200 micron measurement down the bottom here and that is about the length of what I call the kernels on the side and I just I'm not going to talk about any elemental analysis in this particular short video I'm going to talk about some incredibly interesting structural components to this so obviously the first is that you have these regular blocks here and the regular blocks themselves seem to be made up of subunits and the subunits seem to be made up of sub-subunits, so you can see here. Uh, and on the side that faces the plasma, uh, the coherent ball lightning structure, as I refer to it, it has spikes. And on the other side, it has these fluffy balls. And we're going to have a look at both sides. And first, we're going to have a look at this back side. So you can see that this comes in to a point up here with these top sections here with this kind of very particular shape here and I think that's a very important shape and then you've got this kind of counter space here and you can see between this counter space this is kind of beaming stuff in here and this is kind of beaming stuff through and you can actually see some spread down here now I've actually taken this at quite a high resolution so we should be able to zoom right into this and here we go so you can see here that this has got these kind of like lines coming here, almost like magnetic flux lines, right? And uh, they are very, very linear, and then they kind of curve around and curve around here and even curve around more here. But what's very striking to me is these structures here, which are what these are comprised of. And... Uh, Maybe if we can make this uh, view this full screen view uh, window uh -huh. uh, maybe like this it'll give me some more flexibility to move around okay so um yeah so you can see we're coming through this channel here and you can see these lines and and then they are grouped into sort of chains here but if we go in and look at these balls here. Um, we actually have this blown up, I believe, uh, and if we go to this one, we've actually got a, a zoom in, and if we go into these, we can see, it would appear, that there are little clusters like this, and the little clusters, these little clusters here, you can see the hole there, the hole there, the hole there, the hole there, these little clusters group into bigger clusters, and the bigger clusters, here, 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 they group into much bigger clusters and then these much bigger clusters group into the overall structure. The interesting thing is these are completely smooth. <laughs> it's just completely smooth. And there is essentially no um, uh, sort of no roughness on this. These are just lines, almost like field lines coming down. It's just extraordinary extraordinary um, so uh, this is clusters of clusters of clusters of clusters at least at the resolution that we can see it it's influenced by fields and if we go back um, you can see that these are very very smooth on these kind of e edges and then they get very pointy down here now I've actually got a piece if I can find it uh, which is a cross-section of one of these. So just give me a second. Let me see if I can find it here. Oh, you've seen something there, haven't you? What is that? <laughs> okay, let me see if I can find it here. So it is this. And this is actually a cross-section through one of those structures. So uh, we are looking here 
at these surface features which are smooth and if we go in you can see the clusters of clusters here so these are the clusters making bigger clusters making bigger clusters that all come together to one make, make one big structure and then it has this kind of boundary layer this boundary layer where you have these almost like lightning strikes coming out and it makes this overall smooth surface around the edges absolutely extraordinary detail here okay so let's see if we can go back and we are in here and so this one okay so uh, we are basically looking at a slice through one part of one of these sections that are basically broken off and fallen down into the base of the valley and uh, we were looking at it end on so you've seen it from both angles so that kind of describes what's going on here this is from the other channel on the other side and you can see how they interweave with each other and uh, we'll look at that if I can get onto the SEM and look at that in more detail another time so that for me is you see the incredibly straight lines the very pinched field lines it would look like to me uh, around this but anyway that's that and so let's go and have a look at these, this area here and wow isn't that stunning so this is looking down the side wall of uh, the valley and so we've already identified that there seems to be groups and the groups are, are groups of groups and the groups of groups of groups and then inside that they are clusters of clusters of clusters of clusters of clusters at least as far as we can see but on the tips they are pointy 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 and when we look at it when I saw this I thought oh my god that really cannot be what I think it is it can't be and what, I, what am I referring to I'm referring to this shape here this shape here and it's everywhere all of these points are that shape I mean within reason and what am I referring to I am referring to the golden triangle so I've just clipped out that particular piece that you saw a moment ago here and the golden triangle is related to the golden ratio and it's where you have a triangle that has uh, 72 72 and 36 degrees uh, and it's an isosceles triangle and it is related to the pentagram and that is uh, basically a fundamental part of nature and are we touching upon a fundamental structure in nature okay well if this is pulling material in to the plasma and I've already said it's something like a um, the the skin of it is like a, a buckyball it's like a carbon tube nanotube the structure it, it forms this structure and you can go and look uh, at uh, theory by Maxwell in the 1800s about uh, vortices and I, I'll do a different video on this because it's just it's unbelievable how all of this is lining up and I don't understand how Maxwell uh, may be coming from mass or I, I don't know what he saw to have gathered this but anyway um, let's drop in the golden ratio triangle and there it is it is an exact match it's not approximate it's absolutely completely exact and if we drop in the other what I, what I should call south poles because they you can imagine the skin of the coherent matter uh, structure is over here and it's pulling it into the center of the south uh, pseudo magnetic monopole uh, structure if you put the rest of them in boom there they are they are all essentially pretty much uh, perfect um <laughs> perfect uh triangles um with the golden ratio uh i mean I, there's some bits broken off here you can imagine there's a there's a yield strength and beyond that uh the material goes into the churner the the the, the plasma uh and and this this just literally blew my mind and then You've got the counter space. And what am I talking about? Well, between this 
and this, what do you have? You have counter space, which is the opposite. You see it? Okay. So what I'm, what I'm talking about here is, let's say this one, this one, and this one, they are all on the same uh, train, the same part of the structure. And so uh, this is a south, there's a north here, there's a south, there's a north, and there's a south. And above it, above the south, you have a north. <laughs> and above this south, you have a north. It's just hilariously perfect. It really is. It's just wonderful. And this is so close to Maxwell's 1800 uh, uh, mesh of um, magnetic vortices. And it, and, and uh, the, the boundary layer is, is um, uh, what do they call them? Uh, pinion wheels? Is it a pinion wheel? Uh, but, but, but basically, that is the actual mesh, as, as, as uh, Matsumoto might call it, the itonic mesh. So I think we're really, really getting to the root of this structure. And somehow this is related to everything in terms of how nature builds itself, which means evos uh, or structures that behave as those structures are absolutely fundamental to the way nature works. And if you look at the I think it's the conclusion of Ken Shoulder's book, Evie, A Tale of Discovery. He said that the uh, Evo is effectively an uh, alternating monopole structure, or they are alternating monopoles. And, you know, I, when I first heard people talking about that, I thought, well, maybe that's like it goes between a north and the south, and a north and a north. It oscillates. But it's actually, it oscillates on its structure. So you have the north here, the south, the north, the south, and so on. And that's it. That, that is it. And I'll do another extended video on this, but this completely and 100% certainly explains the green polarized and the red polarized sections in the floodplain. And essentially what that is, is the overall movement of a, a structure, which would probably be a structure at... Uh, this level uh, we've identified before, this level, these levels, the overall movement of this structure around the outside is one's north, one's south, or so somehow uh, that you end up with polarizing on green and polarizing on red and polarizing on green at this kind of scale on the flatlands. But this for me is breathtaking. And when you understand that that's what you're seeing, then it kind of makes sense. When you look at this image here, which I've already overlaid the norths, because they're norths because they're spewing out carbon, right? <laughs> and this is from Takaaki Matsumoto's uh, paper from Fusion Technology, November 1993, page 171, which you can download on remoteview.icu. So I've just grabbed that image and I have overlaid in Photoshop the golden triangle. And yes, there's a little bit of squiggly nonsense on some of them, but essentially they fit within this golden triangle cone. Um, and in, in other images in that paper, he has them. These are side profiles, um, tiny black and white holes, vertical view, conic shape. So he calls it vertical view. And uh, if I go down to 170, I think it's 170, page 170, maybe. No, it's 173. He has black and white holes. Um, uh, so these are from variational, they're from different views. So if you look at down the end of a cone, you're going to get a different perspective. Um, but here's one feeding another. But... Uh, this, for me, the, the side cut-through was the most interest. Um, and it just occurred to me that <laughs> this is in the golden ratio triangle. And so what we are seeing here with the south, as I'm calling it, the pulling material in and the north pushing it out of the structure, this alternating monopole structure, um, 
that's what it is. That's what it is. And it's a very, very beautiful thing. It's probably one of the most beautiful uh, pieces of structure of material created by nature. But this is its purely created by self-organized plasma. Um, and it's just breathtaking. So I uh, hope you agree with me. <laughs> it certainly floats my vote. And uh, I think uh, Matsumoto was... I, I don't I, I can't recall I don't think he mentioned it I mean other than being a conical shape what did he say uh, yeah uh, tiny black and white holes a vertical view conic shape but it is this realization that it is this golden ratio going on um but I mean it, it couldn't it couldn't be more perfect here and so uh, I thank Hank for sharing uh this sample with me for me to have a look and i thank those people that helped me um be able to do the sem and i thank takaaki matsumoto for actually sharing this and not being intimidated by people and just getting it out there because um that is you, you, science doesn't move forward unless actually people are getting things out there so um yeah, so this is on the same plane. Uh, um, what I was saying earlier, just to recap, you have a north, uh, sorry, a south, a south, and a south, and they're all on the same plane. And this is a north and a north, and then this is the south above this north, and I guess this is the south above this north, or maybe that one is uh, it depends on the parallax of the scroll uh, or and the angle of the um, the mesh of the itonic cluster mesh the ball lightning mesh, the fluidized electrons mesh that's going on. But I would encourage people to go and look at the uh, vortex structure in a very early um, uh, paper that I referred to earlier by Maxwell. So thank you very much for your time. This was Vega Valley Triangle, and I will see you in the next video.